Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking digital glitch space tunnel effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition and I'm just going to run with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document, 15 seconds in duration, 30 FPS, just press OK. Once you've got that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a new solid. And so for this, I'm going to call it me. And then what I need is I need to search for the effect called Me 3. Now Me 3 is a paid plugin from Red Giant. So if you do not have it, please download it before continuing on. So now once we've got that out of the way, the next thing that we need to do is we need to change a few settings. So we're just going to open up the geometry and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size to XYZ individual. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump up the X to about let's say 4000 and I'm going to bump up the Y to about 12000. Now that gives me this big thing that kind of fills up my composition which is exactly what I want. I then am going to change the rotate X to negative 90 and again doesn't really look like it's making sense now but if we come down to the bend Y and we change that to 0.1 and then we go and grab the Y position you can see what we've actually created. So we've created this cool looking tunnel just from changing a few settings and we're going to change it up a little bit more as well. Now you can change it to however you like and if you just play around with some of the settings you'll get some really cool and unique results. So the first thing I'm going to have a look at is the vertices X and you can see what happens when I increase it. So we're going to increase that to you know have these kind of like squiggly lines in there. So maybe something around 450. And then what we're going to do is we are going to come down to the vertices Y. And again, you can see what happens as you increase it. Now, it's very easy to go too crazy in this. So you got to kind of tame down your numbers. So I'm just going to put that to about five, uh, 20. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the X step. And so you can see what's happening here. The higher you go with the X step, the less kind of filled in areas that you have. So I'm going to probably stick with something around five. And if you always want to move that position to anywhere that you want or you, you don't like how you've centered it, then you can always come back to the position settings in the geometry. So now once we've got that out of the way, it, there's no movement here, it's not animating yet, so we're gonna have to fix that. But before we do that, we're gonna come down to Fractal and we're just gonna change a few settings here. The first one, I'm gonna change the Oct scale. I'm gonna bring down to zero. That kind of smooths out those edges. And I'm just gonna bring the smooth normals up to 100. And that just kind of smooths it out as well. So now, Going back to the amplitude, you can see what happens as I increase the amplitude. You can get some really trippy effects as you bring up that number. Now, I'm not going to go too crazy, so I'm probably going to stay around 100 or so, or maybe even a bit less. And the frequency also, by changing that, you get some really cool and unique uh kind of look so I'm going to bring that to about maybe 650 something like that or maybe even a little bit less totally up to you so now what we need to do is we need to animate this so the first thing we're going to do is we want to animate all of these kind of lines and if I just scrub through the evolution that's a pretty cool animation right there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold option on my keyboard hit that stopwatch and then I'm going to write time times let's say 40. And so now if you've done that correctly and you play that back, now you've got some movement to those outer kind of tentacles. If you want it to go faster, just change that value. Or if you want it to go slower, maybe you can write time times 30 if you want. The next thing that we need to do is obviously make it move forward and we'll do that with scroll Y. So it's again going to be the same thing. All we're going to do is I'm going to hold option on my Mac, hit that stopwatch and I'm going to write time times let's say 1000. And so if you've done that correctly, now you will see that movement through the tunnel. If you want it faster than that, all you have to do is change the value. So let's say 2000. Now we've got an even faster tunnel. 
I'll keep it in between 1000 and 1500, maybe something like that. So moving on, the next thing that we need to do is I'm just gonna come down to the material and I'm gonna change a few things. So I'm gonna change the metal, I'm gonna bring that up to about 100%. I'm gonna change the reflectivity. I'm gonna bring that up to probably about 100 as well. I'm gonna change the reflection roll off also to 100. And so now you've got this even trippier kind of thing happening there with uh, this kind of fractal tunnel. So now once we've got that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to duplicate that layer of mirror. So I'm just gonna press Command D to duplicate. And then on the second version here, I'm gonna change a few things. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to the shader settings and I'm gonna change the draw to points. And then I'm gonna increase the points and you can see what's happening now. You can see these little kind of dots or points um, coming up. And so that's looking pretty good. Maybe too much. Maybe we'll go back down to maybe four or even three. So once we have that, then we can change a few other things. So I'm gonna go back into geometry and I'm gonna change the size Y. So I'm gonna play around with some of these settings. So maybe I'll bring it down to about half of what it was, 6,000. And so now you've got this kind of, uh, all these dots that go along with this kind of tunnel. And that's looking pretty cool, but we're gonna change it up even more. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to go to the vertices X and we're gonna bump that up. So again, purely up to you how much you want it to go. Um, I'm gonna bring it up to about 1200. And so this is important for the next step, which will help give us a kind of a, like a sonic boom that will occur as you go through the tunnel. But I'll show you that um, a little bit later. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring the vertices Y just down a little bit. And, uh, and I think that's pretty good for now. So now moving on. So the next thing that I'm, I need to add is a camera. And so I'm just gonna run with a 50 mil camera and just press okay. And then I'm just gonna open up the camera settings. So where we get this kind of unique look is here in this zoom. So if I bring the zoom to let's say around 400 or even less, you can see what actually is happening here. And so that sonic boom effect is now what is created with that duplicate version of the mirror. And that's looking pretty cool. And if you want it to come to a, like a smaller point there, you just have to change the zoom. So you can even start it from, you know, something like that, but maybe that's a bit too much, I guess. So I will stick to maybe somewhere, somewhere around like 300, something like that. And if that point is not in the center, you can always move it to wherever you like. So now the next thing that we need to do is I'm just gonna come to the transform settings and we're gonna add a simple rotation on the Z rotation. So all I wanted to do is just spin around like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the stopwatch, make sure I'm on the first keyframe, move to the end of the timeline and I'm just gonna press one for one complete revolution. And if I play that back, now we've got this cool rotating kind of glitch effect. And now we just have to, you know, colorize it and put all the colors and things like that in there. So the first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer and I'm gonna search for the effect called Video Copilot Color Vibrance. Now this is the color scheme that I'm going to use and you can play around with some of these colors. You know, the darker colors give a certain vibe as opposed to the lighter colors. So I'll stick with the darker color and I'm just gonna put it back in there and I'm just gonna play around with some of these settings. So I'm gonna drop the vibrance a little bit so you can see what's happening there. So maybe somewhere around 95, something like that. I'm also gonna drop the preserve luminance to maybe around about, I don't know, 50 or 0.5, something like that. And I'm also gonna bring the brightness down, maybe 0.5 eight, something like that. The lower you go, the more uniformed uh, color that you have, or if you want different shades of color, maybe I'll go 0 0.89. And then you have the gamma as well, which I'm also going to drop down to 0 0.87. And so 
If you don't want as many things, you can always lower that. So I'll get it to around about 0.86, 87, something like that. So now once we've got that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to add some glow. So I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer and I'm gonna search for an effect called glow. So now once I have glow on there, I'm gonna change a few settings. In the first instance of glow, I'm gonna keep the threshold at 60, the radius at 100, and then I'm gonna bump up the intensity to three. And then I'm gonna duplicate that by pressing Command D. And obviously it's way too much there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the threshold up to about 100. I'm going to bring uh, the glow radius to about 84, and I'm gonna change the glow intensity to 0.0 maybe three or 0 0.4, depends on how much uh, glow you want. So now the next effect that we are going to put in is we're gonna add some curves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a simple S bend. So I'm gonna move that over and you can do it to your liking. So if you want it to be a bit darker in the areas that are supposed to be dark, you can drop this bend over there. But you can see there, just by adding something like that, you can really play around with some of the contrast and things like that. So now the next effect that we're gonna add is Minimax. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for the effect called Minimax and I'm going to bring it to about, let's say 20. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop it underneath all my other adjustment layers and now it gives a little bit of extra glow to some of those brighter areas. So that's looking pretty cool. The final adjustment layer is I'm just going to add some noise. So I'm gonna add some noise to this composition. I'll probably bump that up to about 10% and I'm just gonna put that on top just like that. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you have this cool glowing digital kind of sonic boom tunnel effect happening in there. So yeah, so that's about it for this tutorial. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next video.